How's it going? Welcome to today's video. So this is day eight of me learning how to play Mr. Scary by Doken. Super excited for this one. I think my my hand actually got pretty used to the to the daily practice of that riff, which is super cool, but also kind of unexpected because I'm. It's not that long that I've been heavily back at playing guitar <clears throat> excuse me because until recently i played every now and then but um not like on a daily basis especially not on a daily basis for an hour or i don't know two um so that is very cool but i indeed played back in the day for hours on and um multiple days a week so maybe, I don't know, maybe it is in my muscle memory and just needed like a little bit of a kickstart to go at it again. Who knows? Anyways, I don't want to make this intro too long. So with that being said, um, let's just cut the tape here really quick and I will tell you more about the signal chain. And then we will do a little recap of, last, of the last video and then we will dive right into playing Mr. Scary by Dokken. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, signal chain. ES Les Paul going into my uh, TC Electronic Spark, going into the uh, Digitech Bad Monkey, going into the green channel, which is the clean channel of the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier in the pushed mode. From there into V30 speakers, 2x12 cabinet, mic with an SM57. And also this SC450, which is basically also picking up the sound of my voice and recording the room. And that room mic is blended together with the SM57 that is right at the dust cap of the speaker. Uh, is then going into my audio interface, is in there, mixed 50-50 and then captured via OBS. Okay, so in the last video, uh, I practiced to basically glue the intro riff together with the main riff of the song. And I also heavily focused on the main riff of that song because uh, that is what I added in, I think it was video 6, so day 6. I think I added the main part there. And yeah. Uh, today I will focus more on the main part because I think the intro is uh, already in my muscle memory but the main part not so much. By the way, if you want to know that uh, little nifty kill switch trick I'm doing here is basically if you have ALS Paul with dual volumes, one volume for the neck, one volume for the bridge and you don't use the neck like I do in that case right now. So if I basically have the volume of the neck on zero and the volume of the bridge on 10 and therefore I can flick to the bridge, get my sound, flick to the neck, no sound. You obviously hear the sound because it's a hollow body and it is picked by the mic, but no amp sound and no feedback issues. Yeah, that's the trick here. Um, what I'm doing here is basically just playing some alternate picking strokes just to warm my hands up here. No particular pattern or anything, nothing special, just basically uh, some notes of the main riff and uh, yeah, up and down strokes alternating. <laughs> Thank you. 
Uh, one more thing. That riff, that Mr. Scary riff, is actually a very good warm-up exercise, feels like. Because uh, you use all your fingers and you basically move a little bit around the neck, which is great. And I feel it's a very good warm-up warm -up exercise. So that is very nice. Uh, also, I'm trying to focus on um, playing that... <laughs> Playing that, um, I think it is a har. Is it is is it a harmonized part? I'm not. Uh, I'm not 100% sure about that. If you know, let me know in the comments down below. I think it is a harmonized section, and uh, basically what you do is you play your regular power chord shape, which would be that, but then you mute the middle string, and then it sounds like that. And if you strike it as a chord and not single notes, it sounds like that. Power chord, harmonized, right? Let me cut the tape here and then we will bump it up a notch. So now that is the intro riff to that song. Let's uh, play the main part of the song. There is a bridge part in between which goes like that. the main part of the riff. If you connect the two it sounds like that. Bridge part. Main riff.
right now we have the click track enabled it is at 155 bpm let's hear how that goes <laughs> way better than in the last video I'm super stoked about that it was way cleaner I missed way less notes when uh, doing the string skipping part and also the hammer on with the pinky finger is getting easier by the minute which is awesome because I think we, we're still missing some confidence in that pinky finger but obviously you have to build up your muscles too um, be able to really to really basically to basically do a fast hammer on with the pinky finger but um, yeah it is possible and we are getting there which is awesome now on that note let's bump the speed up a little bit let's go to 164 and see how it goes 164 here goes nothing <laughs> skip that part if I would skip that vibrato on that string then I would not miss the hammer on um, that often but 
I think the vibrato adds so the vibrato adds so much to the whole experience and thing and feel and sound that I don't want to skip that. So I obviously could follow my usual approach, which is to add all the icing on the cake at the end when I actually really have that riff in my muscle memory. Um, but I don't know. That part makes it so exciting for me to play it that I don't want to delay that for the future when I actually have that riff in my muscle memory. So, uh, yeah, I guess we just wing it, we just add it right now. And even if it is a little sloppy, whatever, who cares? We will get there and um, that is our goal. And therefore, let's not get distracted over here. On that note, let's, um, let's bump it up a notch. Let's go to one... Actually, let me cut the tape here. Alrighty, 180, here we go. Okay guys, okay, 180 is also, besides the beginning, when I was just trying to figure out how to play over that 180, um, besides that first initial tries in that video, it went great with the 180, way better than the last time, which is awesome. Also, the thing is, when I bump it up from the one, from, from the 160-ish, to the 180 it is a pretty big step as you probably notice and um, it takes a few seconds to get adjusted to it I feel like it um, it takes a few seconds for my internal rhythm to basically pick up on that speed and um, translate that to my muscles and I also feel that it takes me some seconds to actually really detach my mind and I already talked about that detach my mind and basically just detach my mind from my playing if that makes any sense I hope you can follow me I hope you understand what I'm talking about but the thing is if you really really try to let loose let's put it that way let loose and you're you're at peace and totally free in your mind then you can shred <laughs> and that is my approach to it and I really can feel it working out for me because uh, that was what just happened like in the beginning I was oh man how, how do I how do I make this happen and then I actually managed to put myself in the zone and from there it just went went uh, through the roof for my current level of uh, guitar playing on that note, um, yeah, let's do the 180 again.
whoa, 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 alrighty. Okay, that 180 felt great. Let's bump this up a notch. Let's go to, again, let's just shoot for the moon here. Let's go to 200. Because I really want to force myself to play faster than I'm comfortable with. Because then I break the barrier of the speed. And that's how we learn to shred. I guess that is how I think we're going to learn how to shred. On that note, <laughs> okay, 200, 200 is always like it is, I don't know, it's like jumping from something. It is like. <laughs> That last one actually uh, was hitting it quite good because the thing is on that speed I'm missing notes here and there especially I talked about that in the last video upstrokes because it is insanely hard for me right now at that tempo of 200 BPM to catch every upstroke. Um, maybe I have to broaden the range of motion of my picking hand maybe I have to like just m physically move more but I don't really want to do that because then I will have to work more to achieve the same speed and that will make me m m tired faster and also exhausted faster and um, will lead to faster muscle fatigue which are all things that I don't want um, yes Yes, yes, yes. Also, when I play that fast, I try to really focus on not moving my hand, my fingers too far away from the fretboard. I really want to keep them as close as possible because the closer they are to the string, the faster they are to hit the string again when I want to fret a note. So um, that is hard to do, to say the least. Um, I don't really... Um, I don't know, there, there is a, let's say, natural distance that you gravitate to when moving your finger away from the string. And I feel like it is very hard to overcome that barrier and play with a cleaner, uh, let's say, technique and try, really try and force yourself to move your fingers as little as possible um, away from the strings. Yeah. It is what it is, you have to practice it and yeah, on that note, let's kick it again.
Okay, now uh, we did the fast part for now. Let's dial this down again and then really focus on our picking hand. So let's go back to uh, 150, 155. This will feel very strange now, I can already tell. clean run <laughs> that is amazing because that was not possible for me in the last video in uh, video number seven I guess uh, it was video number seven um, it was not possible for me to connect both of these runs while playing over a metronome on uh, around 150 BPM it just uh, wasn't happening the parts the connection between them uh, were not uh, fluid enough fluid enough to really uh, glue them together and make them sound like one and that is an awesome progress because at the end of the day you are playing music and obviously the music should sound like music and good and not like super technical but fluid in a way and smooth and like music and therefore that is a great achievement on that note uh, I will cut the tape and we will move to the last segment of this video which is going to be me <coughs> attempting 
to play over Mr. Scary, the original version, at the original speed. <laughs> incredibly hard to do but uh, we will get there I, I feel it we will get there it is really getting better from um, from uh, day to day and I'm missing the the first beat usually and also I have to obviously click and leave the mouse and then come back to my guitar to then um, hop into the track but uh, yeah I'm missing a few notes here and there but also that uh, track is around 220 I have tapped it on my metronome and it is about 220, so uh, me practicing at 200 is not even the full speed of the song. So um, that is a great thing. And on that note, I guess um, I will wrap up this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Super excited for it. Thank you as always for watching and I will see you there. Peace out.